The book is Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Although it's ostensibly about the bombing of Dresden, it's actually a very strange and bizarre story because everything is seen through the eyes of uh, a Billy Pilgrim who is a rather imperfect human being. He's an optometrist, he's tall and gangly, he's got a weak mind and a weak body. Um, and so the story unfolds in a very strange way. Uh, even worse, or even better, whichever way you want to look at it, Kurt Vonnegut cannot stay away from science fiction. So uh, the story is interspersed with time travel and with Billy Pilgrim being abducted by aliens. I read Slaughterhouse-Five when I was in my mid-twenties um, and I was struggling uh, to do everything perfectly uh, and I was beating myself up big time when I didn't get it right, as, as many of us do. I still do that actually. But, but what this book says is that it's okay to be imperfect. Um, you don't have to be smart, big, strong uh, to live a meaningful life. And for me, that was a, a bit of a revelation. I'm sure other people would say, hey, you know, th that's second nature. But to me, it, it, it was a, a, a real message that uh, it, it, you don't have to beat yourself up all the time. The name of the book that's changed my life is The City in the Stars by Arthur C. Clarke. When I was 12, uh, science at school was really boring, dull and boring. And then I picked up uh, The City in the Stars by Arthur C. Clarke. And I'd read books, science fiction books before, which uh, you know were set 50 years in the future, and they spanned maybe the solar system. But this spanned a billion years and the whole universe. And it, it really switched me back onto science. And I don't know who it was who actually said that uh, science fiction is the only um, legal mind-expanding drug but, you know, they could have been saying that about R.T. Clarke's City in the Stars. The book that has made me become a science writer is called Last Chance to See by Douglas Adams and Mark Harwaldine. Basically, it was all based around a trip they made in the late 80s and early 90s to go and look at the most endangered species in the world and see what was happening with their conservation. It almost laughs at how stupid humans are to let these amazing things slip away from you and it makes you just think, well, this is stupid, we must do something about it. So it's kind of inspirational but without making you feel depressed and you know, down about the state of the world. So I think that it's quite unique, I think, as far as I can see. I first heard about Last Chance to See when a friend of mine who I was in halls with lent it to me and he came in and said, oh, you like animals, you should read this. And I, did, I absolutely loved it. And then so I bought it for friends, um, you know, bought it for my partner who's then bought it for his dad. And it's kind of trying to spread the word about this book around. My most life-changing book is, is one that I uh, read very often because I lecture on it every year, which I, I say, uh, because it's going to sound like a very pretentious choice. But it's The Critique of Pure Reason by Immanuel Kant. This is a book that I read first as an undergraduate uh, uh, studying philosophy uh, and it had a tremendous impact on me because it, it uh, spoke to a set of problems that I felt before going to university and at university about the nature of knowledge and about the relation of thought to the world. And this book, even though in general it's uh, not correct, is wrong in all sorts of interesting ways. And I, I constantly find it a kind of touchstone when I'm thinking about these problems in my own academic work.